Now, in this part of the video, we will talk about positive pressure ventilation, and especially we will talk about positive and expiratory pressure, PEEP, and continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP. In order to understand what the PEEP is, let's first talk about normal restful respiratory cycle events. Suppose you are going to breathe in. It is very important to know that inspiration is an active process. It begins with contraction of your diaphragm, which pulls the lungs downwards. The intrapleural pressure becomes even more negative from negative 5 down to negative 8 cm water. This causes the lung and the alveoli to expand. This expansion makes the alveolar pressure, which was zero, decrease to negative 1 cm water. As you know, in respiratory physiology, the atmospheric pressure is considered to be zero. Because of this pressure gradient between alveolar pressure, which now is negative 1 cm water, and atmospheric, which is zero, the alveoli suck the air in until alveolar pressure also returns to zero. This means when you start breathing, actually you are just taking the air into the conducting zone. But as far as how the air reaches the alveoli, it is because of the pressure gradient. Again, during inspiration, the alveolar pressure becomes negative, which sucks the air in. However, there are some diseases in which the patient's lungs are not able to create this negative alveolar pressure to suck the air in. For example, in case of acute respiratory distress syndrome, there is a widespread inflammation in the lungs which causes injury to the lung cells and surfactant dysfunction. In acute respiratory distress syndrome, three populations of alveoli can be distinguished. There are normal alveoli which are always inflated and engaging in gas exchange. Flooded alveoli which can never under any ventilatory regime be used for gas exchange and atelectatic or partially flooded alveoli. It is very important to know that the main collapsed alveoli are those that have small size. Because you already know that small alveoli have a strong tendency to collapse, creating regions of atelectasis. In order to reinflate such alveoli so they can participate in a gas exchange, we will use positive and expiratory pressure. Let us see how it works. It is very important to know that before PEEP, first the patient is put on mechanical ventilation or assisted positive pressure ventilation. First we intubate the patient and put him or her on mechanical ventilation. The mechanical ventilator pumps the tidal volume into the lungs under positive pressure, as in blowing up a balloon. Pumping air into the lung makes the pressure in alveoli more and more positive. It is at its most positive at the end of inspiration. Suppose the alveolar pressure becomes plus 10 cm water. This pressure reinflates most of collapsed alveoli. Then we connect the trachea to the room air and expiration starts, which is a passive process. So the positive 10 cm water alveolar pressure pushes out the tidal volume. The air starts leaving the alveoli and alveolar pressure starts falling. In many cases, expiration is terminated before FRC. Suppose the alveolar pressure drops from 10, uh, I mean plus 10, down to plus 8 cm water and expiration terminates at this pressure. This termination pressure is referred to as a positive and expiratory pressure. We will not allow the pressure to fall to zero because the reinflated alveoli again collapse 
This at this point, we connect the trachea again to the ventilator and continue pumping air into the lungs. The pressure in alveoli now is plus 8 cm water. At this point, you pump the air to the lungs and alveolar pressure increases suppose up to plus 15. During expiration, when the trachea is connected with room air, the alveolar pressure returns to plus 8. This means now cycling begins at PEEP, in other words, the alveoli cycle at a larger size. Again, we will not allow the alveolar pressure to drop to zero because the sick alveoli collapse. It is very important to know expiration is not assisted but is accomplished in a normal manner due to passive recoil of the lungs which pushes the air out and provides expiration. Let me draw here a graph to apply all our information to it. On y-axis we have the alveolar pressure and this point is FRC. In assisted positive pressure ventilation, you pump the tidal volume into the lung and alveolar pressure is becoming more and more positive. It is at its most positive at the end of inspiration. Suppose we reach plus 10 cm water. The trachea is then connected to room air. The positive alveolar pressure pushes out the tidal volume and at FRC alveolar pressure is again zero. The next cycle begins and you again pump the tidal volume under the pressure. We reach plus 10 cm water. At this point, inspiration ends and trachea connects to the room air. The expiration starts and alveolar pressure starts dropping. In many cases, expiration terminates at this point, suppose at pressure of plus 8 cm water. This termination pressure is referred to as a positive and expiratory pressure. At this point, in other words, at PEEP, you again start pumping air to the lung. The alveolar pressure becomes even more and more positive, suppose we reach plus 15 cm water. Then expiration starts that drops the alveolar pressure down to plus 8 cm water. So cycling will further continue in such manner. In other words, if you note that alveoli are cycling at larger size or larger pressure. If the alveoli cycle at large size, first it reinflates the collapsed alveoli and allows them to participate in a gas exchange. Second, it prevents them to collapse, which in turn prevents creating regions of atelectasis. So, to sum it up, PEEP is useful in treating the hypoxemia of acute respiratory distress syndrome. It is very important to know that, of course, PEEP has advantages as well as downsides. The first advantage is that it reinflates the atelectic alveoli and it larges alveoli. Large alveoli are more stable, they have less tendency to collapse. Second, the large alveoli are also better ventilated and supplementary oxygen is more effective at maintaining a normal arterial pressure of oxygen. As for the downside to positive pressure ventilation, it decreases the venous return and cardiac output. This happens because it makes the intrapleural pressure too positive with inspiration. Consequently, the pressure in the right heart as well as great thoracic veins increases. Thus, the pressure gradient driving venous return decreases. Venous return into the right heart decreases which in turn decreases cardiac output. The second important type of positive pressure ventilation which we deal with is continuous positive airway pressure. In clinical practice, CPAP is commonly used in case of treating obstructive sleep apnea. 
Obstructive sleep apnea is a common form of sleep apnea characterized by pauses in breathing or periods of shallow breathing during sleep. Each pause can last for a few seconds to several minutes and they may happen many times a night. It is caused by complete or partial obstruction of the upper airway. One way to help such patients and prevent periods of sleep apnea we use is the continuous positive airway pressure. In this case, the patient is not intubated, rather it is administered by mask. The patient breathes spontaneously on their own, but under higher positive pressure. Consequently, it keeps the airway continuously open, and the lung and upper airway remain at a larger volume throughout the respiratory cycle. This prevents obstruction of the upper airway and episodes of apnea during sleep. Let me draw here a graph and see how it works. On y-axis we have alveolar pressure and I will divide the graph into two parts, inspiration and expiration. Under normal conditions, without CPAP, during quiet inspiration, alveolar pressure falls down to negative 1 cm water and air flows to the alveoli and in the end of inspiration, alveolar pressure returns back to zero. In expiration, the alveolar pressure rises to plus 1 which pushes the air out and then it returns back to zero. In case of CPAP, the air is pumping to the lungs throughout respiration. So the patient breathes under large pressure. He may start breathing at plus 5 cm water. During inspiration, the pressure falls supposed down to plus 3 and in the end of inspiration, it returns back to plus 5. In expiration, the alveolar pressure rises up to suppose plus 7 cm water and in the end of expiration, it again returns to plus 5 cm water.